Welcome back again today, guys. Today we'll be talking about a special group or groups of people. Um, this group of people, um, I'm going to put them all today in under one umbrella because there's over... I want to say close to like 800 different ethnic groups, you know, tribes, if you know them by that, but ethnic groups um, in the place that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm just going to put them in an umbrella and then as time goes along, I'm going to go one by one by one by one. But I just want to get this information out to people that might not even know that these people existed because up until not too long ago, the most of the world probably didn't know that these people existed. So today we're going to be talking about the Papian people of the country of Papua New Guinea and some surrounding islands, you know, around Papua New Guinea. And, you know, these are the makeup people that make up the uh, indigenous people who speak the Papian language in these areas in this country. So the indigenous people have faced, you know, a hardship with colonization of like European countries or countries that were colonized by Europe, you know, such as powers like Australia and with the Indonesian government as well, which has led a big, you know, unspoken like genocide on the original indigenous people of this area. So, uh, you know, they also face hardship um, and you know they fight for their independence and they want their independence and furthermore you know conflict between the peoples in Papua New Guinea also affecting you know indigenous people you know the conflicts between the countries also affect the indigenous people as a whole so um, you know now some Papuan people are hunter and gatherers and others are cultivators or both and they cultivate uh, such foods as sugarcane yam taro um, sweet potato and coconut palm and with the Europeans arrival Europeans brought other crops uh, from other parts of the world such as beans corn potatoes uh, coffee squash tobacco and peanuts are also on the list of what Papians cultivate or and or eat so um, the sago palm is also used to achieve starch or to get starch and in which it looks like uh, tapioca if you're familiar with tapioca which ugh, I hate tapioca it has no taste it has a weird like you know soft gooey texture Ugh, I don't really don't like tapioca right even though tapioca is in some things that you eat that you might like I guess but I'm vegan so I don't eat any of those things for the most part but um, the Papians also like to drink a drink called kava uh, which is a fermented drink from the roots of the kava plant and it is said that the drink calms your mind and your body and your spirit it's almost like a stimulant drink now to cook these foods the Papians used uh, burned uh, clay pots or clay pots that they made uh, as well as bamboo trunks when the cooking uh, is done the men big dig a big hole which is covered with banana leaves and then they heat stones on the fire that they built nearby um, that they just heated uh, were, are thrown into the hole after that and then finally the plants and the meat are thrown in after that process has taken place and at this point the stones are thrown in and some water is also added as well and the last step is, is that they cover the hole with leaves um, and earth and when the food is cooked uh, the eating starts after that process so on the coastal areas like the rivers and lake areas and the ocean areas fishing is practiced as you know you probably thought it would be and canoes are long and can fit up to 15 people in them and 15 rowers or 15 people in these canoes and these canoes are made by stone axes um, and fire and the main fish that is captured, uh, you know, in the river areas, in the lake areas are catfish and crayfish. And in the open sea area or the ocean area on the coastal um, parts of the, you know, coastal regions, um, this, the, the main catch is sea turtles and till oh, When the Papian people hunt, hunting in the forest is usually or accompanied by, you know, such tools or such weapons as bow and arrows and uh, sometimes also blow pipes and the hunt um, can be from anything or anywhere any kind of animal they will, they will you know hunt and they hunt anything from tree marsupials uh, to forest ostriches um, and also crocodiles as well and they also hunt some birds like the paradise bird which is a very beautiful bird for their feathers uh, and these are used for the ornaments for the men when they put them on their head in certain parts of their body uh, and for festivals as well and these people are very known for their amazingly amazingly tall if you have not seen their house you need to check this out I mean literally you really need to check this out they are known for their amazingly tall uh, tree houses or you know korowai uh, tree houses and that belongs to a certain ethnic group obviously that is in the Papian people you know under the Papian people and in which they're 50 feet tall so, I mean literally 
you guys will see at the end of the video, but some of these houses are amazing and they they, they, they climb up them, uh, you know, they take everything up, they build them. Um, you know, the roof is made out of palm leaves and it's built on two slopes and the walls are made of thin mats made of tree barks and palm leaves, uh, which are closely intertwined. And I mean, these things are amazing. They're so high up in the air. Like, I mean, I would be scared, but I would still go, but they were so high up in the area. And you see these little kids, you know, they're kids just like looking over the side and you know, you got your teenagers, you got the women that have to bring everything up, all the belongings the pets the animals and it's just amazing how they they they, they build these houses in the trees and uh, you know a lot of times they do it to uh you know for defense you know because uh, attackers come um you know to escape the forest floors so they won't get bit that much by uh you know bugs and also to uh not be attacked by you know obviously wild animals and uh, things of that nature very beautiful houses you have to see them but then they also have another house called the long house which is on the ground and this usually has a roof uh, made of palm leaves as well and built on two slopes as well and the walls are made of thin uh, mats made of palm leaves and tree barks which are closely intertwined and the door is low and very narrow and so this is only uh, this is a process that they they do so only one man or one person can enter go in and go out at one time and the long house has two uh, or several fire beds uh, two or so fire beds made of overlapped stones and uh, you know installed on thick bed of sand on a wide clay platform in order to prevent the fire um, from burning the wood and obviously you know making the longhouse you know go on fire and burning everyone inside so it's a safety pr precaution but the longhouses are amazing as well because longhouses are very long like they're very long you know you know you have the tree houses then you have the longhouses and the longhouses are just they're really, really beautiful houses as long as, as, you know, as well as with the tree houses as well. Now, the long houses can also host uh, young men which are, you know, trying to form a family and must stay away from their mothers. And the long houses are also places where the men gather to chat, uh, drink, or plan war expeditions. And they store the totems of the tribe, uh, war shields, and the conquered trophies inside of the long houses as well. Now, New Guinea is rich in different resources such as oil, but the salt is extremely rare in the mountains and uh, is very sulfurous, which makes the salt very toxic. And But the Papian people have found a very unique and ingenious way to consume the salt. And this is how they go about doing it. So the spring waters are directed through a bamboo pipe and this is through an underground um, reservoir that they make with bamboo, bamboo pipes in which they stuff with huge amounts of dry grass which absorbs the salt water. Now the grass is then taken or extracted from the bamboo pipes, it's dried uh, in the sun and then the grass um, uh, and then the grass then has the salt and sulfur mix uh, inside of itself or inside of the grass. And the grass is then burnt to remove uh, some parts of the sulfur and the peoples are left with but the ash. This consumable salt is still not ready yet. So it's, it's, it's almost ready, but not 100% ready. So for it to be 100% consumable, the mixture is dumped into water to remove the remaining sulfur. Then the water is put in uh, a fire to evaporate which is covered with banana leaves and this leaves some salt though not pure but it's better than no salt at all and so for the currency poppy and juice paradise bird um, feathers as well uh, in which the yellow ones are the most valuable uh, they also use pigs and uh, mullet shells as well as a country currency which travelers come to, uh, to to see them you know and pay them to live and they, they pay them uh, the, the country currency uh, to see them in their natural habitat and you know to see how they live now the traditional religion is animistic in which they believe spirits uh, inhabit the trees uh, mountains caves and rivers and death to them is not natural but a evil spirit uh, action and the spirits are influenced through magic and they also believe in taboos and protective powers uh, such as totems, weapons, and ancestors. And women also do not uh, have babies by sexual contact, this is what they believe, but by the will of the spirits. And whoever the spirits pick, uh, the woman becomes pregnant. So the clothing of the people is different from man to woman as well. The women wear a fiber skirt, um, in which the skirt length depends on if they're single, married, or a widow. And the men wear a penis sheath um, to protect against bug, bug bites and also wear loin now the most well. spread adornment is the uh the nose cartilage or the you know the nose jewelry or you know you put the hole through the jewelry um i mean i'm sorry through the nose and that's the uh most widespread um uh adornment that you can you know is 
pretty much almost in every ethnic group or if you want to say tribe there and uh, this is done with a sharp piece of bamboo and some men also wear brightly colored feathers in their head as well from the paradise birds like I stated and as well as some people's uh, who tattoo their face and some people tattoo their face for different meanings some people just tattoo it for for looks so today we've learned a overview of the Papian people which is over or I'd say like around 800 or so different languages in different uh, ethnic groups but this is an overview of the Papian people I hope you've learned about somebody new again today a lot of people don't know about these people um, and I also they have a, a little bit of link with the aboriginals of Australia which is right where is it at Papua New Guinea is right here you have Indonesia then you have Australia down here so um, it's funny because between the two islands the island of Papua New Guinea is very uh, um, uh, has has tons of vegetation to where um, right you know if you go down south a little bit you go to Australia it's uh, more of an arid deserty type atmosphere so it's really uh, interesting uh, with how the peoples are similar and not similar between the aboriginals in Australia and the indigenous people of Papua New Guinea but today we learned something else again and and I hope you guys take a lot from this. Look up the tree houses. You'll be amazed. Um, you know, look up a video of it. You'll be amazed on how they climb these things and how they build these things. It's a very beautiful culture. There's so many different cultures, over 800 languages. Every ethnic group has their own dance and their own tradition and their own clothing. And, um, you know, I hope that the people of Papua New Guinea can get what they are asking for because there has been a lot of colonization and a lot of genocide on these people that no one knows about, no one talks about, especially on this side of the world. So as always, to all my people out here, I hope you um, have a very, 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 very good week. Stay safe as always, and you'll always learn, and I'm out. One love. Peace.
What's up? What's up? Hey. Shalom. What up? Hi. Happy.